Good evening YouTube. This is Los Angeles Prepper here coming to you live from my front facing camera which is different than the let me see if yeah it's sort of <laughs> there's more light but I sort of need to be facing like this way but anyways lighting is not the most important thing in the world what's important is that we keep prepping keep living full and active lives outside of prepping and to that end today I'm going to talk about um, a quick hunting update so I have been doing some uh, research on hunting there is a lot of information in California you might think that it's hard to hunt in California and I I wouldn't necessarily say that um, in most states well, I can't even say in most states, you know, I I don't know how it is in other states as far as like unincorporated land and things like that. But in California, there are a number of places to hunt. Um, you can hunt on some BLM lands, national forests. You can often hunt uh, certain private property um, or maybe anyone's private property with their permission. But um, But then there's a lot of different laws about zones and seasons and how to take animals and um, what you have to do with the animals. Like I was reading, uh, if you hunt bear, you have to give the something something like non-trophy parts of the skull to fish and game so that they can inspect it within 10 days. Um, or the, you give them the whole head and then they give you the non-scientific parts back. Uh, I'm not looking to hunt bears. Um, looking to avoid bears like all sensible people. Um, I am I love nature. Nature's magical, but I don't have any desire to get up close and personal with Bambi or with uh, uh, you know, at least as far as the recreational sense, you know, hunting is one thing, but um, I'm not I don't at least at the moment I don't sort of plan on hunting predators in the sense of like bobcats and wolves and bears and um you know maybe coyote coyote sort of you know on the fence um but i'm sort of focusing more on wild boar and rabbit at the moment a uh, couple reasons couple really obvious reasons jackrabbit specifically even though there is a season on uh cottontails which Oh, when is that season? Is that already over? No, it's not. July 1st to January 28th. So I could actually get a little bit of rabbit hunting in. Um, looking at Los Padres National Forest. Uh, enormous forest. I recently saw a video of a guy ATVing around on some off-road fire trails, or just some off-road trails that maybe they were file trails, maybe they were just off-road trails. Um, but he was going uh, rabbit hunting, I want to say with a shotgun. Um, but at any rate, and I don't own, I don't presently own a shotgun, which is um, something that I'm looking at. In fact, Big Five right now has a special on the Maverick 88, which has a, um, comes with two barrels, comes with the a home defense barrel that I think uh, I want to say was 18 inches or 18 and a half I think and then uh, a 20 I'll just look at it right now no not that Sail ends 1028. I know, killing me. It was funny. I was just, I was in the Big Five uh, we, within the last week, and I was talking to the salesman about the Maverick 88 just with one barrel on sale for 200. And he's, and I said, you know, how long is the sale gonna last? And he said, you know, kind of goes on sale like a couple times a month, so it's kind of cracking up. But I can, I can afford to wait. I could definitely afford to try to you know make some more ends meet, do some more side work. Um, but to answer the question that I was asking originally, it comes with an 18 and a half inch security barrel and a 28 inch field barrel. And the field barrel comes with a modified AccuSet choke. 
Blued finish. Dual bead sights on the, on the field barrel. Eight uh, regular bead sight on the 18 and a half barrel. Synthetic stock. And if those two barrels aren't enough, the Maverick 88 is compatible with other Mossberg 500 barrels. So, just so many reasons to pick up an affordable rifle, um, not just for home defense, but for hunting. Um, especially because it's coming in, uh, not only just the sheer flexibility, I mean, small game, foul, big game, uh, shot, slugs, other types of rounds, um, just it's such a versatile weapon um, especially in the short to medium range long range uh, you know shotguns aren't really ideal for long range if you have a longer barrel and you have a rifled slug you know maybe out to 100 yards you can do some crazy stuff if you're really good with a shotgun but let's just say short to medium range for for most people so looking to get into some hunting i think my next trip to the range i'm going to uh, pay the hunter safety course fee so that I can sign up for the next hunter safety course and then of course um, Forgive me and then of course I'm going to Pick up an adventure pass so that I can go into the forest Southern California adventure pass is just kind of what you need to be able to You don't need one you could get a day pass, but adventure pass like 25 bucks and a day pass I think is six dollars. So you figure you take six trips into the forest. It's worth the pass and is long the only thing I would be afraid of is if the pass uh, expired like in December but hopefully it's like you, uh, when you buy it it's a year from when you buy it so lets you park in there so even if I'm not hunting even if I just want to hike in the forest lets you park anywhere um, not have to worry about that so so yeah gonna get into some hunting um, gonna start with uh, jackrabbits um, I do plan on eating the animal as well as I want to save the hide, I just, I'm not sure uh, if I have to get it processed immediately or if I can sort of clean it and save it for a while and then process it. I don't, you know, I don't know if I would pay somebody to like make moccasins. I'd love some moccasins or some gloves that, or like maybe mittens or some shooting gloves or um, maybe just even regular gloves, I don't know. Um, rabbit fur, as far as I understand, makes nice gloves, so at any rate. That would be really cool, um, especially to use, you know, more the animal too, because I don't, um, I don't take, uh, y you know, it's when you go to the store and you eat a chicken, you know, you, in a sense, you're taking that chicken's life because you personally aren't, but you are causing someone to take that chicken's life. So it's interesting that hunters that personally take animals, you know, feel a lot closer of a connection because they're directly ending that animal's life versus just buying a steak in the store. You're still sort of part of the reason that that cow was slaughtered, but you're you're disconnected in the sense that you're not, um, you know, you're not processing it, you're not pulling the trigger. So, in in accordance with, you know, my beliefs and what I consider good sportsmanlike conduct. I do plan on trying to use as much of the animal, you know, I don't know if I'm going to eat the brain. I guess some people can't eat the brain, um, cooked or other, you know, cooked, of course. I would plan on definitely eating the liver, um, probably throwing in the heart, too. I don't know about the lungs. I guess people eat them. Um, maybe it's something I would try to, like, cook separately and just see if it was palatable, uh, you know. I, if it had a weird flavor, I wouldn't want to like mess up my whole rabbit stew with like weird lung flavor at the brains too. I don't know. Tell me if you've eaten rabbit lungs and rabbit brains, if they taste differently, if they if they stew up nicely, let me know. Uh, you know, I don't want the animal to go to waste, but I'm not. Um, I don't know. Do people eat kidneys? I don't know if you throw the kidneys in or not. I know like the entrails and the guts and the stomach you throw out. Um, I guess you can eat the eyeballs raw in a survival situation. I think like special force, some special forces have to do that in their training. But uh, I'm going to wrap this video up, keep it under 10 minutes. Um, I had some really good feedback on my last video about hunting. I have basically never gone hunting before. Um, kind of unfortunate. I've, I've, you know, I've had the opportunity. I mean, I certainly could have picked up an air rifle or a slingshot or, you know, made a spear and got my hunting license and gone hunting or something without a firearm. Um, just haven't known. 
I did have a roommate that was into hunting, but I just never really hunted with him because I didn't own any firearms at the time and I was only with him for a couple months. He was a really cool guy though. I definitely would have gone hunting with him and I could have learned a lot from him. He was more of a, he was kind of a bow and arrow guy, maybe unless, probably even on a boar he would have gone bow and arrow. He was kind of legit like that, but he is kind of legit like that. But anyways, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. LA Prepper is going to be heading into the forest and looking for the little bunny rabbits to eat and use as much as possible. Stay tuned for more updates and I will talk to you next time.